Today I'm going to look at my donor heat sink that I'm going to be using for Charlie's uh, custom controller. So this little gem came out of the e-waste and this is a Robotech uh, XDC 2460. Now this particular controller is I believe obsolete and um, so you know you can't buy them I don't think anymore if you can it's they're probably not going to be around too much longer. Uh, this is a dual H bridge controller that can be paralleled up to create a single H bridge. Uh, I don't know how effective that is, but um, they're saying that you can get like 150 amps out of it when you parallel them up. I don't really care. I'm not using the board. Um, someone had decided at the time to cut in to remove part of the board. So this board is now totally not repairable at all because they've taken a chunk out of it. However, it does to it does power up. Um, there's two wires that come out of it, a black and a yellow, and that is the logic uh, supply input for the um, DC DC that's on here. So this is arranged to be uh, one inch bridge on one side, one inch bridge on the other side. There's individual power cables that feed both bridges. Now it's not ideal for um, recircling currents um, but it does solve some problems with uh, copper weights on the PCB board because you don't have to have uh, the ability to sustain maximum current flow through your PCB board um, from one side to the other. So what they're doing is they come in and they literally drop it right down next to where the bridge is being fed and then their, their phase or their motor connections, which is the, the uh, white and the green here, these pick up the current right at the, uh, the half bridges, the center, center um, point of the half bridges. Um, again, not the, the most ideal, like for this, it's, they're good, but the power, the power on the ground is not the ideal. Um, so the other thing they do is with their cables, um, so they, they use a eight gauge wire, flex wire, with ferrules, and the ferrules are, I believe, press fitted into the board. So that's, that's actually not too bad. Um, I plan to reuse these on my controller since, you know, it's, they're already decent sized cables, they're high flex, and um, I can then put them into my board. What they're using on here is, uh, I believe, an STM 32F330, I believe, or 303 um, ARM processor. So I think that family is more dedicated for motor control. Um, they have a bunch of other small things in here, like a CAN transceiver and, and uh, you know, their logic supplies up here. Their half bridges are set up as um, two, uh, two FETs per switch. And these are, I think, 75 volt, 75 volt or 80 volt, um, sort of equivalents to the 4110 RFB, RFB uh, 4110, um, which I guess is Vichy now, it used to be IR. So, this bridge ended up, or this controller ended up in e-waste because they'd blown one of the um, uh, switches on the on the H bridge. And for those who want to check to see whether or not their MOSFETs are okay, what you can do is the digital multimeter is set to the diode ch uh, checker. Let me get this to show up properly. And then you, what you do is you check the body diode. So each of the MOSFETs will have an internal body diode. And that body diode can be checked by just going from the source to the drain. Let me get my setup here. So in this case, this guy is actually blowing. Now if I check the switch beside it, He appears to be blown too. 
and I'm going to check the one that's beside him. He's okay. So these four MOSFETs in the front, I think, or maybe it's just the two. Yeah, so that one's gone, and that's gone. So this half bridge is totally blown. But this guy here, and this guy here, are okay. So that that's a really quick check. So the other thing you can do if the body dials are intact is check to see if the impedance on the gate to source is uh, high meg. Now it, that might be impacted by your MOSFET driver circuit. So again, I'm going to actually look at the good one first. Uh, so we're looking at about 4.16 meg. Now if I come back to the bad one, Bad one's actually shorted. The one beside it is interesting that it's not, it's not registering at all. So it's totally open. So that also could be related to the fact that they've kind of cut into the board down here. Um, but normally if you're on the gate, you should at least see a MIG. A MIG. And there's nothing there. But having a short is definitely a sign that the the MOSFET is, is toast. Anyways, so that's a that's a quick check on how to or a quick instruction on how to check your MOSFETs in your um, uh, motor controller bridge. So going on with what the plan is here, um, I don't need the full um, blown heatsink, and I don't want the section that's been cut up. So I'm going to take a metal saw and cut down um, to get to a, a value that's sort of size that I I want for the Charlie. It will fit nicely in the in the area where the old controller used to be. You actually see where the um, failure had occurred potentially like from overheating. I'm not sure if that's from overheating or not. There's actual discoloration and, and stuff on, and that's over where there's discoloration over here so that was probably going to fail anyways and the failure for the the MOSFET was over here this is all chewed up because I was pulling off the um, the clips for the uh, for the uh, MOSFETs so that's the other reason why I want to use this is that they have all these clips that will be used to um, push the MOSFETs against uh, the heat sink and we'll put down like a phase change insulating um, uh, interface down here so that when the MOSFET's pushed up against it and it heats up, that it will reflow the phase change material to give you a very um, low thermal um, resistance between the, the tab and the uh, heat sink itself, and yet provide good insulation. Um, phase change material is probably one of the best for this sort of stuff because it will actually flow to fill in all the um, little gaps that increase your thermal resistance. So you want the highest surface contact um, to occur and um, that's one of the best ways to do it. So when this when this gets cut down then I can reuse their uh, end plates. Um, if I'm smart I can reuse this to, um, if I put the connectors in the right places, I can reuse those holes and just, you know, reuse the cable exit point. And then that'll give me a nice clean um, you know, box enclosure. The other thing I would have to do is also trim this guy down. So this is a sliding plate. So when I cut the heat sink, I will also have to cut this plate. Um, and then this will then get uh, screwed to the end. So it'll be a nice clean little package. When I make the PCB, it will not be a mill PCB for this because uh, power controllers really require very good um, 
recirculating current paths. And if you don't have that, then your inductance gets a lot higher and that causes greater overshoots on your MOSFETs. It forces you to um, potentially slow down your switching, which then increases your thermal dissipation. And it's, it's, just, it's just better to go and actually build a real PCB um, through one of the quick fabs than it is to, to mill one. Um, now there are tricks that you can play when you go to do the PCB to get a higher current rating for a lower copper weight. And um, if you look at some of the Chinese controllers, you'll see that they play some of those tricks too. Like they'll end up putting um, heavy copper wire soldered down to their PCBs to provide um, the current capacity. Um, you know, just, just, just a, um, a reminder, solder does not make a good conductor. Um, in terms of if you're looking at a comparison of resistance between solder and resistance between copper, use copper where you can because solder has a fairly high resistance. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's enough for today. I will continue on um, with probably the next video talking about the design of the um, the bridge. So that means what MOSFET will be chosen. Likely, I might even just use the same ones that are in here. It might be a little close to the uh, max voltage on the um, from the battery and what overshoots you might see, but um, it'll either be the ones that are used here or the 4110s, uh, and I do have uh, a couple tubes of those hanging around. So you know the the calculations will be pretty pretty clear as to where to where the best uh, or what best FET would be used there, and then we need to talk about um, now enough capacitance that you need on board to handle the expected ripple current. And um, again, I, I don't know how much of an impact uh, the uh, ripple voltage and current will have on the life expectancy of the lithium battery. But um, you know, more capacitance is always going to mean that we have to manage pre-charging as well. So. You know, we, we don't want to be able to hook up a battery and then have a huge surge of current come in, which will then probably trip the BMS on the battery. But anyways, that's, that's for another video. So thanks for watching.